Hello and welcome to Triage, Rapid Legal Lessons for Busy Healthcare Professionals, a podcast created and produced by K&L Gates. Each episode is designed to highlight important developments in health law and analyze the impact on our clients and friends of the firm. We hope you enjoy this podcast. I'm Steve Pine, an associate in the K&L Gates Research Triangle Park office. And this is the third in our three-part series on updates to the quality payment program in the 2020 Medicare Physician Fee Schedule proposed rule. In the prior two segments on QPP, we discussed both changes to the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS, as well as the new MIPS Value Pathways program. In this segment, We'll focus on updates to the Advanced Alternative Payment Model, or Advanced APM track, of the Quality Payment Program. As a quick refresher, there are several advantages for a provider to be within the Advanced APM track of QPP. And ultimately, the goal here is for a provider to hit the definition of a Qualified Participant, or QP, in which case a provider is going to be exempt from MIPS reporting requirements, since reporting will already be done through the advanced APM entity, and that provider will also qualify for a 5% incentive payment bonus. Um, So how does a provider do that? Here is a basic refresher background. First, the provider needs to participate in a Medicare Advanced APM which, generally speaking, is a value-based payment option that meets certain EHR standards, quality reporting standards, and requires participants to take on certain levels of more than nominal risk. Then, a provider needs to hit certain thresholds of either percentage of patients or dollars that flow through an advanced APM model. If a provider hits a lower threshold, they may qualify as a partial QP, where they would be exempt from MIPS, but wouldn't qualify for the 5% incentive bonus. Then, hitting the higher threshold, a provider would qualify as a full QP. In tracking whether patients or dollars hit that threshold, a clinician can include not only the Medicare APM they're participating in, but also certain other payer advanced APMs that CMS has qualified. These can be commercial, Medicaid, or non-original Medicare health plans, such as Medicare Advantage or PACE, as well as medical homes. Now, that's a very brief summary, and to get additional details, one first place to turn would be CMS's website at qpp.cms.gov. So there are a few proposed changes to the advanced APM track in the 2020 rule to discuss, and we won't go over all of the changes, but I'll highlight four key examples. First... Um, For purposes of the other pair advanced APMs that we just discussed, CMS proposes to expand eligible medical home models that can qualify as an other pair advanced APM. Medicare and Medicaid medical homes currently qualify, but this would add a new definition for aligned other payer medical homes, which would include medical homes operated by other payers that are formally aligned with CMS through participation in a CMS multi-payer medical home model. And then that would also meet a series of additional criteria that CMS sets forth in the proposed rule. So that's the first change. Second proposed change is a change in how CMS would determine whether a partial QP needs to separately report to MIPS. In short, currently for partial QPs, CMS looks at the NPI only, um, such that if a provider's NPI qualifies as a partial QP, that provider can elect whether they want to separately report data under MIPS. But then CMS will apply that determination 
to all NPI 10 or tax identification number combinations for that provider. The result of this is if a provider elects not to report to MIPS for one NPI 10 combination, CMS would apply that determination across the board. The provider can't pick and choose. How CMS proposes to change this is that CMS will now make a separate partial QP determination for each NPI 10 combination. Thus, a provider's NPI may qualify as a partial QP for one NPI 10, but may not meet thresholds for another NPI 10 combination and therefore have to report to MIPS for that combination. Uh, the import here is providers under this proposal can make different elections for each NPI 10 combination that it qualifies in terms of whether or not to report to MIPS, but also a provider may be required to report to MIPS for certain NPI 10 combinations that now may not qualify as a partial QP even though other NPI 10 combinations do qualify. That's the second change. Third. CMS proposes several changes to how it determines whether an other payer APM, uh, such as a commercial risk sharing arrangement, meets the nominal risk thresholds to qualify as an advanced APM. Um, and while the exact methodology gets a bit in the weeds, the short story is this. Under current rules, a commercial risk sharing arrangement must maintain at least 30% marginal risk across any possible agreement levels or tiers. Uh, in other words, if there is any possibility for marginal risk to drop below 30% in this commercial arrangement, it won't qualify as an advanced APM. The new rule uses a methodology that looks at the average marginal risk. Thus, if finalized, another payer arrangement could drop below the 30% marginal risk in certain situations, but still qualify overall, provided the average risk remained above 30%. Finally, the fourth change we'll discuss is CMS is exploring a change to the definition of a full capitation model. And the reason this matters is uh, since the 2017 QPP final rule, CMS established that a full capitation arrangement per se meets the financial risk criteria to qualify as an advanced APM. However, a full capitation arrangement has meant an arrangement where capitation applies to all items and services. Um, in this proposed rule, CMS notes that as it collects data, it sees arrangements that are largely or nearly fully capitation, uh, but may exclude certain service lines, such as hospice, transplantation services, or out-of-network emergency care. In light of that, CMS is seeking comment on whether it should provide a list of certain categories of items and services that, based on common industry practice, could be excluded from an arrangement, a capitation arrangement, and that arrangement could still meet CMS's definition for full capitation. CMS does not have a specific proposal laid out in the proposed rule, but based on comments it receives, may include a list in the final rule. So, there you have it. Four key changes to the advanced APM track proposed for the 2020 performance year. Uh, we hope this three-part series on recent QPP changes has been informative. Uh, we welcome your feedback, and please reach out with any comments or questions. And as always, thank you for listening to Triage. Thanks again for listening to Triage, rapid legal lessons for busy healthcare professionals. New episodes are available for download through iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast applications. By subscribing to Triage, you will receive timely notifications of each new episode. Also, if you have any topics that you would like to hear discussed on Triage, please don't hesitate to email triagesupport at klgates.com. We would love to hear from you.